So let's transition to the GC agonists. Uh, Tony, let's start with linaclotide, and then we'll move on to placanotide, and then we'll argue about which has less uh, diarrhea, because um, <laughs> that's always the argument. But uh, start with linaclotide as the first one, again, out the gate, as you said. Sure. As you said so it, it was the first of the two GCC aguanilate cyclase C agonists. These are receptors that are on the um, lining of the, of the GI tract, so right from the antrum right down to the uh, distal colon. Most of the effect is probably like lubiprostone in the small bowel, um, and by stimulating uh, the GCC, it, really, it has a second messenger, cyclic GMP, which turns out to be important uh, because it does two different things, as far as we know from at least animal models. It uh, opens up the CFTR, or chloride channel, and it also uh, may affect the afferent nerves uh, in the submucosa or, the, uh, or other linings of the GI tract, thereby reducing abdominal pain. Um, so it, linaclotide is, uh, was, is a, a product that um, is taken once a day, and uh, it, comes in, it comes now in three different doses, uh, 72, 145, and 290. Uh, micrograms, though the lower doses uh, are for constipation and the higher dose is for IBS with constipation. That's at least the FDA approved doses. But in, in clinical practice, we'll use a variety of different doses uh, with it. And in the clinical trials, it shows that it improves um, abdominal pain, which is key, bloating, uh, as well as stool uh, frequency and consistency. One of the issues with linaclotide uh, is that it can cause diarrhea, and sometimes it can be uh, severe. So I usually I think that's part of the reason they went to lower doses, right, to try and get under the under the diarrhea. Am, am I wrong in that? So that's that's correct. The data in the with the lower doses, uh, of course, 72 was studied in C in chronic idiopathic constipation, didn't actually so, show less. But in clinical practice, I think uh, I, I I tend to I think I see less. Uh, importantly, I tell patients to, that this is a this could happen. I think if you uh, prep the patient for it, uh, and let them know the first time, first couple times they take it, to be aware that that could happen. Don't plan it when they're about to take a long trip or anything. Uh, that that it's less of an issue uh, with patients. And um, yeah, so so a bill placanotide. The contrasting yeah, so agent, not really contrasting, it's the same category. Yeah, but. absolutely. And a very similar agent, also a GCC agonist, so works by the same, a similar mechanism to what uh, Tony talked about. And uh, like linaclotide, there are large phase three studies showing benefits for um, chronic idiopathic constipation and IBSC, and it's approved for both indications in the United States. Um, the diarrhea rates, uh, you know, the big, the main side effect with linaclotide is, is diarrhea, and uh, as Tony mentioned, around 20% of the patients in the clinical trials. And lower rates of diarrhea have, were reported in the placanotide trials, but there's a lot of, as you meant, alluded to, Mark, there's a lot of controversy as to how that data was collected. Um, I'm not sure I'm, I'm the best person to comment on, um, you know, on that particular issue. But what I would say, just from a practical standpoint, is I think they're both very effective drugs. And I also, by the way, think they're, they're both very safe. Uh, you know, I, uh, we've done some work, uh, which I think is quite interesting, showing that regardless of whether you're talking about, you know, a GCC agonist or other forms of treatment for constipation, that most patients who are constipated actually don't mind having some loose stool. So they don't, they don't view it as an adverse event. Well, this goes back to quality of life. A little. Uh, there's studies that show that the quality of life of DIBS patient versus C, doctors are threatened or enthusiastic about working up diarrhea and they want to do, do, do. And when they see a constipated patient, they're like, oh, constipation. But the patients are more miserable in the constipation category than they are in the diarrhea category because they never get relief. So, Brennan, are we, should we? Not worry, diarrhea doesn't matter, let's get them relief because they're, they're quite miserable? Yeah, no, I think you're onto something with this. Um, you know, literally urgency, right, requires sort of like an urgent workup in the mind of the physician, uh, whereas constipation is slow, we could take our time. But, you know, uh, I mean, it's sort of uh, facetious, but not. I mean, you're right. I think doctors are, are maybe a little more laissez-faire about, about man you know, take a laxative. And, and I think it's important, again, to distinguish. We're talking about IBSC here. We're talking about not just... Um, moving bowels, but also reducing the bloating and the discomfort, and that's all part of why the quality of life is so affected in IBS-C and in IBSD for 
slightly different reasons. Um, so no, I think we need to be just as aggressive at, at improving quality of life in these patients as we would in, in IBSD patients.